us. Uh, uh, we are glad to have you on my Media Prime Prime R. This evening, we are sorry for the late start. Uh, we this day are going to be looking at uh, the Kumbai Kondo City uh, stretch uh, alongside the Babachu Bamenda uh, stretch. Many uh, persons are not too happy in these two regions, asking why till date uh, the routes are not under effective uh, re construction. Um, very difficult at times to uh, go to Bomenda and also very, very difficult to move from Kumba, the main headquarters, to uh, Mundimba in uh, the Indian division of Cameroon. We are also going to be looking at uh, why ministers would always have to say that they are working on high instructions from the President of the Republic. Do they? not uh, have what it takes to work on their own to create uh, to take initiatives so as to make Cameroonians uh, believe that uh, the president of the republic had good reasons to accord them with their responsibilities to carry forward um, ministerial uh, duties in this uh, nation we are going to be discussing these two topics with our panelists who are seated already senior barrister ashu emmanuel is in the house he's been away for some time, um, we thank God he's uh, up and uh, in good form. We, he is the president of uh, the national president of the Reform Party. Good evening and welcome. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Good evening. Good evening, fellow viewers. Nice having you again. I hope you are going to enjoy the evening. Okay. Um, Apostle Ambe Valentine Gua is uh, our consultant. He's in the house with us. Uh, good evening and welcome. Good evening, Mr. Leo. Good evening, Cameroonians. Good evening, my co-panelists. It's always a joy to be here. Bamenda Baba Jirut, Kumba Ekondo Titi Stretch is a topic for tonight. Stay tuned to your screens as we bring you very vital information. Okay. We also are in the company of Atia Tilaris, journalist and, um, yes, former desk editor of the Sun newspaper and uh, former Secretary General of the Cameroon Journalist Trade Union for the Southwest region. Also, former president for Kamasesh Oboya. We are glad to have you with us this evening. Thank you very much, Leo. Uh, I think we are going to call uh, the kind of call this because issues of the issues in the country, it's, uh, it's like the sacred call where people go to share money uh, and not happen to realize products because a lot seems not to go in the way it should. Okay. We are also in the company of uh, Robert Malanfe. He is here uh, on behalf of the CPDM party. Uh, we are glad to have you. Uh, it's a pleasure. Greetings to you. Greetings to my co-panelists. Greetings to all Cameroonians, especially Frank Mbia. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. <laughs> Are you of the Frankist? Uh, I just greeted all Cameroonians and Frank Mbia is one of Cameroonians that I decided to give a special greetings to. Okay. I'm sure you got your greetings. Um, Senior Barrister Ashu Emmanuel, I'll start with you. Can we understand why uh, in 2021 the conditions of the route uh, between Babaju in the West Region and uh, Bomenda, headquarters of the Northwest Region, T, uh, is in the shape in which uh, we find it uh, today? And also understanding why the stretch between Kumba in Meme Division and uh, Mundimba, a Kondotiti in Indian Division, are still uh, are in very, very deplorable state. Thank you, Mr. Leo. You see, the first thing we have to note is that these are routes that have been fully budgeted. Mm -hmm. uh, the Kumba, Ekundu Titi, Muneba Road, I think that was given to Jenny Militaire. Uh, when that, when that, that project started, I, was, I had some matters at uh, Mundemba. I thought that they were going to finish it because at that time there was the Bakasi crisis. So it is really appalling that many years down the road we are seeing this sorry picture of underdevelopment. Well, it is a failure in government policy because if a road project is handed over to a constructor, there has to be follow up. I don't know whether it's because it was given to a military engineering corps that cannot complain because if it is a military they will say you have to wait for the, for money to come from the ministry they don't buy for tenders so you cannot classify them under the same uh, cap as the private companies like Razel and other the others 
So I don't know who is in charge of that road now, but it is a sorry piece of underdevelopment to have that road in this town state. I think uh, the minister in charge has some stories to tell us. The company that is handling the road has a story to tell. They should certainly not go and tell us that it is because of insecurity because we have never had any inst instance of construction material being burnt like as it happened in the Babaji Road and it happened up north because the Chinese up north when they were constructing Boko Haram attacked their, 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 their base burned down their construction equipment and they had to run away this has never been the case in the Kumba Ekolo Titi Mundemba Highway and I don't think these people have any excuse not to construct that road. This is an area where you have all the materials available. The only thing they have to import is coal tar. They have to bring it to the region is coal tar. You have gravel there, you have stones, you have ground, you have everything. Their machines are there. So why are they not building the road? I want to feel that it is a matter of government policy. Because at times, it can serve the government to leave a road in that state to slow down the approach of the enemy when we talk in terms of the Pakasi crisis. So, it's my guess. <coughs> I want to understand, to be to believe that it is a matter of policy, because if you're not policy, the Prime Minister comes from that area. Yeah, but he is a chief there. Yeah, How can he explain that the road leading to his chiefdom it's in that sorry state. The Prime Minister. No. Mr. Leo, tell me something else. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, actually Jenny Militer took care of the road from uh, from uh, Mundimba to Isangele. They are the ones who worked. It's, it appears there was a company that is uh, charged with uh, the Kumba uh, Ecology Stretch. Remember, uh, some Turkish guys were kidnapped, the, the, the contractors that were working on that. I'm on, not on privy to that information. No. I'm so not so privy to the information. If they were kidnapped, I'm not aware. They were kidnapped, and uh, it is said that uh, they had to pay uh, 30 million francs for for their 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 release ransom. for their ransom. And mm -hmm. one of them was killed. Yeah, yes, one of them actually had to die. But um, Apostle Lambe Valentine, despite uh, the situation, mm -hmm. um, we have seen the government engage in some actions in the northwest and southwest region is it actually the fact that they cannot provide security adequate security for these roads uh, to be done and if that is the case why not hand it to Jenny military the, the the military guys to to walk the roads all these years when we talk about uh, my stretch and we want to attach it to the past five years of the anglophone crisis is amazing mm -hmm. that road the challenge there is older than anglophone crisis we should remove the anglophone crisis out of context kumba ekondo titi stretch has been there for decades much has been spoken about the road so we should not take cover under the anglophone crisis of insecurity to pamper the situation it's so bad that great elites have come from that particular environment we have mayors and parliamentarians on that environment who drive to those villages from time to time they go to the parliament the worst of it is that recently the prime minister is coming from that same environment i am sure if the parliamentarians and the mayors did not have the power enough to influence the construction of the kumbai kundo titi stretch with the appointment of the prime minister a son of that bongongo village from that particular stretch it was supposed to have been a sign that something dramatic has taken place in that region Remember one time I said here that the kind of geopolitics practice in Cameroon is very funny. A few persons are picked in particular regions. They have well fed at the expense of the masses. We just get excited that a prime minister came from our place. We will have had several prime ministers from the northwest. The Bamenda Womb Ring Road still remains a mystery. Let me say it. These roads are abandoned because they are very strategic. These are roads that link Cameroon and Nigeria in business. 
and these are roads that have a very pivotal role to influence the economy of these two regions and if at all these roads are properly constructed much of the focus of businessmen will not be stretched towards this side it will be focused towards Nigeria that is the reason why we should not take the anglophone crisis to compare the ring road or to compare the Kumbayikono Titi stretch it's a very serious problem with the appointment of the Prime Minister right now, I'm sure in his position in office, with his position in office, he was normally supposed to have influenced the tiring of that route. It will shock you that when ministries went to the assembly to defend their budget this year, the highest budget was allotted to the Ministry of Public Works. Where is that much money that is given to that ministry taken to? Considering the fact that we are already in a crisis right now, they were supposed to have taken the advantage of this crisis as a means to appease the people to do some things that have been agitated for many years and they have not been given i think the government should hold its ministers responsible just like they have done recently for the covid 19. the misappropriation and mismanagement of funds in this country is the reason why most of the jobs given in this country are not done a minister enters into a ministry Every year they are defending budget in the National Assembly, yet the job is not accomplished. We are yet to still have a road that will link the different capitals in this country. We we'll have roads, good comfortable roads. I can tell you that some of the roads that Aijo constructed are still the pride of Cameroon. We don't have testimonies of recent roads. What has that particular stretch, Ekondo Titi Kumba and Bamenda Ring Road, what has it cost this government? that they will not invest in those particular areas. Let us not take these five years of turmoil in the north and the southwest to cover up the mess that has been there for many years. I think the government has all it takes to construct or to tie those roads. And with the, with the fact that those roads are very essential and strategic for the development of these two regions, Pamul is there and transportation of oil is taken through sea in vessels to bring to Douala, to bring to Yaoundé, yet there are roads there that can transport that those those containers of oil through tankers to come to Douala here. Why escape the road and use the high sea? Now that there's an anglophone crisis, oil is still being transported from Pamo through the sea in Diabatu to Douala. So they should not tell us that it is because uh, um, um, the anglophone crisis, what anglophone crisis? Anglophone crisis has not stopped them from transporting red oil that was stuck into gallons and um, uh, containers in Pamo to come to Douala. It is now that they are telling us that the anglophone, the crisis did not stop them from transporting oil. The crisis yeah, should not stop them from also, It's also not uh, very easy to, 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 to work under the prevailing uh, situation. I am saying that we should not take cover on the Anglophone crisis. The roads that road is as old as before the Anglophone crisis. Okay. Uh, do you understand what um, Apostle Lambe is saying at Well, like I said at the beginning of the program, that it will appear there is a mafia uh, when it comes to road construction in the country. Mm. Uh, there is a, a cabal or a cartel that is working to frustrate uh, the road work projects because uh, when you look at the, the Mora Dobanga uh, Kuseri Road in the far north region, uh, that, wo that road is part of the uh, government's uh, growth uh, employment uh, strategic paper uh, from 2010 to 2020. But to date, that road has not been constructed. And it, it, it is true people want to say because of the Boko Haram attacks that uh, some workers of a Chinese company were kidnapped. Uh, in May of 2014, uh, reason why uh, the work stalled. But from 2010 to 2014, why was that road not constructed? Because it was a road that was constructed in 24 months. And if from 2010 to 2014, four years, 48 months, the road was not constructed, then it means that there is something wrong somewhere. And when the works there stopped from 2014 to 2018, the military engineering corps accepted to take the project and promised to deliver in 24 months. When 24, the 24 months came in June 2020, they had not gone anywhere. And because the, the World Bank funding was to expire uh, that in 2020, government struggled to get three other subcontractors to engage them to deliver the project by October. And by October, they had not, they, they had not delivered. Government begged for extra time to December 2020. To date, that road has not been, been uh, commissioned. So it means that there is a mafia uh, network somewhere. When you look at the, the uh, Kumba, Ikondo Titi Road, 
it was commissioned, uh, the, the, the project was given to a Tunisian uh, company in 2016, in June 2016. And it was supposed to be, uh, I think, 38 billion uh, what France FI World project that was supposed to last 24 months. And 24 months from June 2016, it means that by June 2018, that project was supposed to, to have been realized and handed over to government. Because it, it, we, we understand that some, some Tunisian, uh, the workers of a Tunisian company were kidnapped, uh, I think in May 2018. But before they were kidnapped, they were supposed to have already, the project was almost nearing completion, given the, the, the timeline that was given when the contract was, was, was awarded to the company. So if they had gone nowhere, in the realization of the project, it means that there is something uh, beyond security concerns that is stalling road construction, uh, road works in the country. And the Bamanda, Bamenda Babaju Road is, is not that, that is not that's just a portion of an entire project. The Babaju, the Babaju Bamenda Road has four lots from Babaju to Matazem, from Matazem to Bamenda. The Bamenda Cliff, the, the upstation hill, the cliff is the, the, the third uh, lot of the project. And the fourth lot is from the, the, the foot of the earth cliff, no, the, 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 the new entrance to Bamenda from a called the, Champ the Champion to my two to Veterinary Junction to the food market, going through the hospital and about and coming back to, uh, to, to city chemistry and about. And this is, this, uh, this is the, the project that has not been realized. Plus, if you were to add the, the 350 kilometers ring road, that President Bia promised in 1983 that he was going to personally supervise, that till date is yet to be realized. So it tells you that road projects in Cameroon has something uh, more to it than uh, security. I, I don't know if it's about financing, uh, because from time to time you hear contractors complaining that the money has not been disbursed and all of that. But even with projects where money has been disbursed, even far beyond the, the effective realization on the ground, the projects have still not been realized like we expected. So I, I think that it's a mafia and that President Bia should take responsibility for it because he's the one who is supposed to define state policy and who is supposed to ensure that the constitution and the laws of the land are respected. And he's the one who appoints these ministers who are supposed to take charge of these projects. And the constitution says that he has the right to dismiss the ministers. He appoints them, he defines their duties, and he has the right to dismiss them. Because if you look at section 10 of the constitution, it says that he shall appoint the prime minister and appoint the the instruction of the prime minister, the proposal of the prime minister, he shall appoint other members of government. He can terminate their contract at any time. So if they, if he defines their duties and they fail, like we are having in the case of the roads in the country, where nothing apparently uh, is moving, then President Bia should terminate uh, whoever uh, was was given this duty to ensure that roads are constructed and 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 give it to some other person and ensure that it is done. Because if we keep on crying and we are not moving, then it means that there is something. Uh, I think it's even something spiritual. That okay. is, that, that something uh, spiritual, uh, Robert Malanfe. Uh, where, where, where can we situate the problem? Uh, firstly, I must confess uh, the Bamenda Babaji Road uh, actually is not a good one. That's the honest truth. And uh, that is the entrance into the northwest region. The whole region is supposed to uh, be well constructed. But uh, we should be also realistic when analyzing all this because I've seen many people coming out to decry the situation of the road. But uh, before I go to analyze or to say what is the main problem with that particular road, we should also be honest to say it when we are there as English speaking Cameroonians that uh, the Northwest has one of the best. Net, uh, road network. When I say one of the uh, best road network, it is very clear from Mezam to Kom Boyo Division, the upper road from Mezam to Ngokatunja, where I come from, and to Boyo Division, they do have a road, and to uh, Menchum and the rest, they do have a road. So when we are analyzing, we should also look, uh, we should not, uh, we should not analyze it and look at Littoral, for instance, we are in Littoral. There's no road going to come to to come division, Yabasi, Konjok, and the rest. They don't have, not to even talk about the north region. They do have problems too of road. So I would not like us to take the issue of road to become very very political. That would be knocking heads of people when it is not true. When we say the road in the southwest region linking Kumba and uh, the Anekondo Titi, we say it's political because we don't want uh, business or to flow between the southwest region and Nigeria. It's definitely not true. 
the uh, uh, Boya Kumba and the Manfe Road going through a cock is constructed. We all know that it's a good road, very motorable, one of the best roads we can be proud of. How then will we bring it to become very political to say that roads are not constructed because they want to hinder transport? It is unfair. And finally, uh, the Prime Minister is uh, a minister for the Republic of Cameroon, and he's not a minister for his uh, village or impose the construction of road in his village, they will want to analyze it. If we do that, then I think the South region where uh, President Pobia hails from should have a university, but they don't have. And I don't even want to see the type of thing that in the South region they don't have. So we should not be political when we have issues like this. We should see the reality of it. Now, coming back to talk about uh, uh, the problem of the Babaji Road, I really think that it's time for people of the Northwest uh, region to collaborate with uh, their regional house so that they can work together. Because when we talk about all this, we need these regional houses. We need all our parliamentarians to really work together because uh, this is politics. And uh, the definition of politics will definitely say who get what, when, and how, or the distribution of resources. So our politicians are leading this rule, and we should collaborate with them, work with them for our own interests as a region, the Northwest, and our own interests uh, as a region of the Southwest. I believe when we start to collaborate and work together, then we'll definitely achieve all. I was definitely surprised when I saw one of the member of the regional house in Southwest region that came out to talk about many issues about the regional house. But I was shocked that many people in the Southwest region didn't come out to support him. And we later on know what happened. We are supposed to support our elected official because they represent us. Is that when what the they, problem is? When, when they try, see, uh, I'm talking about collaboration and mm. working together. Okay. Going now in deep of the problem, the Bamenda Babaji Road, uh, the contract was given to a construction company, as the Minister of Public Work earlier said. And this construction company is not doing its job very well. So uh, measures have been put in place to get uh, a new company to execute that project. And pressure is being mounted on the, the, the former uh, 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 company that has this project. Talking about the Kumba uh, road that we are just talking about, we should also be realistic when we are analyzing all this because we know that the contract was signed from 2016 to 2018. And all of us here, if we are honest and we love to speak the truth, we will accept the fact that uh, the road in the, uh, the road construction definitely had a problem in 2017 and 2018 when uh, the crisis in our home regions was at its peak. So definitely, if we are realistic, we would also accept that it was difficult at that moment to construct road because of the crisis, if actually we know how the situation was at that time. So these are the things that uh, we should be realistic. So I'll end up by saying that as the government is uh, getting new companies so that they should actually get this road because actually I decry the situation. The road into the Northwest region is not good. It's actually not good and it's supposed to be constructed. Okay. But uh, let me learn. But by the time the government is doing all its best to construct this road, I really think us as English Cameroonians should actually collaborate very well to construct this. The first collaboration is to actually tell the guys that have decided to pick up arms to create disorder and hinder the construction of this road to actually give construction a chance. I believe that if they stay away from this road construction, hindering it, I believe that the roads will be constructed. Why? All of us, we collaborate with our uh, elected officials so that we can get our own share with okay. regards to politics. Uh, senior uh, Barista, uh, do you think that uh, the government also, because he's raising the issue of insecurity and uh, we are aware of what is happening in these two regions, um, should the government not also uh, provide this, this, these uh, companies with the construction companies with uh, enough security? Is the government not capable of doing that? Because uh, this is going to at least show sign, uh, symbol of the the, 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 the imminent reconstruction that is supposed to uh, take place in these regions. Thank you, Mr. Leo. I don't know which type of uh, knowledge you have of what is happening because. Uh, my uh, good friend, Mr. Kedia, seems to be of CPDM, but it looks like he does not know what his party is standing for. Mr. Kedia, a minister of state in this country.
No, but there's an international university yes, in the region. Uh, I'm uh, talking about state university. They said there was no university. The university is there. The state universities, I mean. The school of a uh, uh, forest university. I'm talking about state okay. university, you not said, schools. You said it's a university. And then you saw the hospital that they just inaugurated. That the minister just visited, the reference, reference hospital. And they said it was the entire sub region. So I don't know what you are talking about. I want to ask you, because we may be turning around, a question that is very simple. Is the money to ex execute these projects really available? Is the money, when the one when it came to building a Bolova hospital, how long did it take? Why was the project not halted? Because the money was available. It has come now to build Bamenda Babaju. Please tell us the truth. Is there money? Because if there is money, that road, there's no reason why the road will not be constructed. Is there money to build Kumba? Ekundu Titi Muneba. Where is it? No, I don't don't show me money on paper. Do the constructors on the field have the money? I'm talking to you about a project funded by the World Bank. For example, the Bamenda Babaju Road is funded by the World Bank and the Cameroon government. And the World Bank is making sure that they give their part of the money. The the, uh, the uh, Mora Dabanga Kuseli Road is funded by the World Bank. I you, know, you, cannot, you cannot tell me on this panel that the World Bank is, is poor. No, I'm saying that the, the, World Bank, the World Bank is not poor. The World Bank has given money for the construction of the moral. Let, 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 you are taking my time. What are you? So what are you so talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! No, he has spoken so much nonsense. Because if you are, if you are, you are telling me ten times. Wait, stop your talking. I like your talking nonsense. If that's time, I will also interrupt you, and you will say nothing. No, truly. No, allow him speak. Okay. When it's your turn, you counter. I will also disturb you. You will not talk. It's so simple. Allow me talk. No, 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 sit down. No, 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 go, go and sit down by yourself. Allow him speak. Please. So you, you cannot make a point of policy each time you talk. You can't. No, it's not possible. So as I was saying, the security question, security question should be put behind the back because a minister in this country who is who hails from the northwest has said that. <laughs> The president has won the war against the Amber Boys. So there is security in the case of so far as the government is concerned. And uh, when I look at those images, those are the images of the Amber You say there is money. Why is it not, the road not being constructed? And I ask you, why is it that the uh, hospital in the south has been constructed in record time? Yeah, when it comes to Babaji Road, for two years now, more than two years now, it is hanging. What is the problem? Is it that we don't have competent uh, uh, engineers? Are you putting the blame on engineers? I am asking the question. Look at the COVID day. If pressure did not come from us, I would every person, any person have raised a small finger. 
that may be another place where money is being siphoned. So I'm asking, you say we're buying finances. Yes, WHO, the same way by uh, uh, IMF finance uh, 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 COVID gate, but until they raised the alarm, nobody knew that the money was not used properly. So this one like this, we have money on paper. Do the contractors on the field have money? Somebody has to tell us that. Otherwise, I don't see why, because if we look at the importance of the North Northwest region, there is no reason why the government would not pursue that road. The reason is elsewhere. So that's why I see it cannot be security, it cannot be government policy, it can only be financial misappropriation. Something is happening on that road, and we have to do it. Okay, <laughs> okay. I was uh, trying to verify because I, I I had many messages from you guys that there was no sound, so I wanted to be sure uh, to know uh, where the problem was. But now um, you have some. You you are taking some notes. Taking notes. Yes, I was taking some notes. Uh, first, Robert said that the president's region does not have a university. Error number one: the lone digital university in Cameroon with ultra modern structure and well equipped laboratory is found in Sak Malima. There are about 300 students from Congo Brazzaville attending that university. So for him to sit on a panel with well advanced people who are enlightened and speak trash, it's a very serious offense. That is a university, it's called Digital University. It is found in Sak Malima in the Ja and Lobo division. Number two, Ja a Lobo division is the division with the highest budget in Cameroon. If the roads are not tied, it's the irresponsibility of the mayor, parliamentarians, and the Senate in that region. It has nothing to do with the absence of budget. He spoke about the Kumamanfe stretch. The Kumamanfe stretch was not done by Cameroon. It was done by the Trans-African Corporation, which is a gift to the Cameroon. Why should Cameroon or anything done in Cameroon successfully be done as a gift? If you see what Chinese have done in this Cameroon, they are gifts. What is the thing that Cameroonians are building by themselves? Which means it is only a gift that is established in Cameroon. The Trans-African Corporation is responsible for the stretch between Kumba, Manfi, Ekok Road, not Cameroon that built it. The next point we have to say is the insecurity when the Territorial Administration Minister on a public show said that the war has come to an end. What is the insecurity in a place where the rebels have been defeated? They should keep that drama of public announcement with that verifiable proof aside. The next thing he says, the, 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 the Prime Minister, I, I had actually I said the Prime Minister, according to the Constitution, one that proposes ministers. Among the ministers in Cameroon, the Prime Minister doesn't propose any. That is the reason why, even though he's coming from a particular locality, he is unable to even give the opportunity for a stretch of road for say 100 kilometers to be that what is the benefit of somebody to be appointed a prime minister in a region when Kedia says that he's a prime minister of Cameroon people benefit from their ethnic location once their individuals are appointed into high offices that is the advantage that most of the times when somebody is appointed the people of his ethnicity go to celebrate and to dance it's not every Cameroonian that goes to celebrate and to dance so the geopolitics in Cameroon is that once your brother is on top of a black plum you will eat the black plums down there but it is not the same in Cameroon most prime ministers have come from the northwest and southwest projects declared since 1983 the ring route with all ministers that came Simon Achiriachu came from the Northwest. Philip Munyang came from the Northwest. And uh, I'm sure that's the two. And then we have Dongote from Southwest. I'm telling my family from Southwest. And Inoni uh, uh, from Southwest. With the five prime ministers who have come from these regions, the roads from Kumba, Ekondo Chichi. Let us say Mafani came from Fako. Inoni came from Fako. This one now is Indian son actively in office yet kumba ekondo Titi stretch is a total mess have you seen people enter bikes for seven thousand from ekondo titi to bongo bamuso a stretch of about 30 kilometers the transport fare is something else 
others go down and carry vehicles instead of vehicles carrying passengers on a road in this Cameroon when we have budget allotted to councils every year 50 percent 15 percent of the budget is given to councils to tar roads for how many years have this council been receiving this budget and these roads have not been tarred we are talking about insecurity the English man say make it why the sunshine why did we not tie these roads earlier before the crisis even break i have said it on this platform nobody should take pretext and hide under the anglophone crisis to defend their irresponsibility and their lack of consciousness and national reconstruction they should take up responsibility that they have failed and they should do everything possible okay. thirdly mr Liu, cameroon has military. it is civil engineering military base which means they have the capacity to go with their war tactics and their machineries and construct. In scripture, they stopped Jeremiah not to be the walls of Jerusalem. He placed military forces everywhere and he was constructing the walls of Jerusalem when there were people who did not want it to be constructed. How can you tell me that we have a construction organization in the military, yet it cannot be exploited in times like this? What are they doing there? Hmm. Okay. What are they doing there? Good evening, Mr. Liu and crew. Road construction in Cameroon is a whole mystery difficult to unravel. Even when a road is said to have been done, it is a shadow of itself looking like a plastered wall. That won't last. Uh, Cliff Fung Mung Mangwa, writing from uh, Bermenda. Good evening to you, Cliff. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Uh, stop the calls, please. Mr. Liu, the government of Cameroon is uh, not serious. What is left for them now is uh, to auction the country. Okay, Fred Fang is writing from Mutengene. Hello, good evening. Everyone uh, in the studio, let's not be hypocritical. Those who stop the construction of uh, roads in Bonge, Kumba, Pomenda, Babaju are our English speaking brothers in the name of Amber Boys. And when they were doing so, we cheered them up instead of shouting at them to stop the nonsense. And to you, uh, uh, to you, some of you in the studio, stop making blames games. Uh, those projects were stopped by your uh, brothers in the name of Amber Fighters. So please reap what you saw when your secessionist uh, fighters were burning the five trucks, Satom, you cheered them up. No a no company is willing to tender his proposal because of the boys. Amy C. Roger is writing from the United States of America. This one, uh, Chair, writing from Bermenda says, Good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm in Bermenda. We use these bad roads every day, but we understand what is happening. This armed um, bandits kidnap road workers set construction companies trucks and caterpillars on fire i'm surprised that uh, some people seem to be very disappointed that calm is returning to the northwest thus to not see any problem of insecurity what a shame uh, chair good evening to you yes uh, some people many more uh, writing uh, in that direction uh, that uh, these roads were the road construction were stopped by the same sons and daughters are uh, from the northwest and southwest region. Well, uh, I think th that's a fact. Uh, we cannot deny that. But then we cannot uh, put the blame entirely uh, on uh, the anglophone crisis mm. or on the insecurity in the far north region, for example, uh, for the roads that are not being constructed in the country. Uh, I, I think that the, the first problem we have is the problem of corruption in the road uh, sector because globally, uh, in Africa, uh, a, kilometer, a kilometer of road uh, is valued at 100 million francs CFA. But in Cameroon, a kilometer of road is 205 million francs CFA. So it tells you that there's, there's something that is not right somewhere. There's something, there's a mafia that we are not understanding. Uh, Cameroon has a, 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 an entire road network of 1,000, uh, 123,000 uh, kilometers of, of, of road network. And out of this number, just about 9,300 has been paved. And in the Northwest region, we have 4,200 kilometers of road. And out of that road network, just 350 kilometers have been paved. So when KDR says that the Northwest region has good roads, I begin to ask myself, where are the roads? Where are the roads? In some regions, we have roads that are going to cemeteries because their sons or daughters have occupied the portfolio of road construction or 
and, and all of that. We, they, they construct roads and even take them to the desert. But in the northwest and southwest regions, we don't have the roads. The roads are not there. Because uh, when uh, Apostle Ambe says that councils should take responsibilities, it's not possible. Because Cameroon roads are classified into three categories. The national roads, the uh, regional roads, and council roads. And as it stands, a council cannot trespass. We had, uh, 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 there was once uh, Mayor Ikema went to around the GC board office area mm -hmm. and mounted yeah. speed brakes because of so many accidents. And, 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 and when, when the, the governor learned of it, he gave an ultimatum that those speed brakes should be taken off. And before long, the, the governor had those speed, speed brakes removed because the council did not have competence to mount speed brakes on a road that is not within their competence. So it, it is very complex. When you think that a, a council should be doing something, the council is looking up to the regions. Thank God that the regional president or what the regional council have been put in place now so that we can now start seeing somebody at the level of the regions who is supposed to do something and is not doing it and we can call them to, to order. For, for now, Cameroon has, I, I think, uh, 9,370 uh, kilometers of national road, about 13,900 uh, kilometers of regional roads, and about 100,000 uh, kilometers of, of, of council roads. And if the decentralization credits the 15% of the state budget that was supposed to be decentralized to councils, if this money went down to councils, there are about uh, 2.1 billion, if it had gone down to councils, then every year, we can boast of about 10 kilometers of roads being tarred by councils. I mean, that's as, uh, aside from uh, the, their normal budgets and all of that. If this decentralization credit went down to them, then we, we are going to have roads everywhere, well tarred in every part of the country. So when, when you talk about insecurity, I, I will not buy the idea entirely uh, because when the Genie Militaire took over the construction of the Mora Dabanga Kusede Road in 2018, they promised to deliver in, 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 in 24 months. But I don't know if between, from 2018 to 2020, there was so much insecurity that even the Jenny military, that's a, 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 a construction wing of the military that was uh, founded in 1962, that the military itself will be complaining of security. It means there's something else that Cameroonians are not being told because we cannot say that Jenny military will be in charge of a road project and then they turn around to say no because of security concerns. Uh, because of Boko Haram incursions, you cannot construct a portion of road. So I think it, it goes beyond uh, security or insecurity as they want to put it. And for the north, for the road, the Babaju, Bamenda Babaju Road, the Minister of Public Works, at the, when the crisis, he, he launched the project uh, in 2017, in, on, on the 16th of May 2017 in Santa. That's when the, that, that road work was relaunched because the World Bank had given 113 billion francs CFA to support the project. When he relaunched the project and later on they said there were security concerns, that was in September when uh, the Sogiak Satom, I think, abandoned the project because of attacks from separatists and other non-state armed groups, and they abandoned. The minister said the, the stretch of road from Babaju to Matazem was going to be constructed because uh, there was no security problem at that end. And till date, that road is, uh, I think, the, the stretch from Matazem to Babaju is about 35% completed, and they have only done ed, ed works. They have only done ed works on that road. And it's at 35% completion. So it means that uh, something, uh, I think, uh, sorry, 38% completion. So it means that it is not only about the insecurity, because before the insecurity creeped, uh, uh, crept into the, 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 the West region, there was time enough from 2017 okay. to, to about 2019, okay, 2019 okay, for see. this road to be constructed. Mm -hmm. So the state should tell Cameroonians the truth okay. that it's not about the security or uh, the availability of funds. It, there is some other agenda that for me I think is spiritual or occultic. Hi, uh, the media crew. <laughs> I salute your endless efforts to whip out uh, ignorance from the minds of uh, downtrodden. My comrades of the ruling uh, sphere speak more of literature than the factual reality. I mean, it speaks more of appearance rather than uh, reality. I think the issue play in Cameroon is the cause effects affair, the crisis in the northwest and southwest term as a result of bad governance, ignorance as, uh, is very devastating or dangerous. Okay? A philosopher, Ambeson, is writing from uh, Yaoundé. Now, um, don't we think that, irrespective of the security uh, situation, um, these roads should be now placed as, as priority projects for these two regions? 
Uh, the road, the road has always uh, been, especially the Baminda Babaji road, has always been a priority to the government, because a road uh, moving into a region, a region like the Northwest region in this state, it is actually a priority to the government. But we should be realistic to talk about the hindering factors, which still has to do with these guys that have picked up arms. Yeah, but, but he, 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 he talked about uh, he talked about the Babaji matters in a stretch. At least this is in the West region. Yes, as I earlier said, there is first a problem with regards to the company that was in charge, which as the minister rightly said, and some changes have been done, and uh, adjustment has been done due to the delay. And, uh, a part of that, that's also one of the factors. The second factor also see has to do with uh, the crisis. I just believe that we should be realistic. When these guys pick up arms and refuse children from going to school, all those in the northwest and southwest region later on stood and up and uh, decried the situation that these children need to go back to school. Thank God uh, things are going back to normalcy and the children are going back to school. And I still think this is an opportunity for all of us to stand up together again and uh, ask these boys to permit uh, the constructions of roads and let them stay in the bushes where they want to stay. And if they have any problem, let them meet the military as they love to but they should allow the construction of roads, which is uh, one of the fundamental human rights that the people deserve from their government. Uh, when I earlier said that um, there is no university in the South region, I actually meant it, and I still say it. For instance, uh, we have uh, insect is found in Kumba. Will we say there is a university in Kumba? No, there is a department, there is a school of the University of Boya in Kumba. So when we see uh, these departmental schools that have been opened in the South region, being opened in Ebolua, Betwa, we should not come out to say things the way we are saying. And I, and, and I still repeat it, all professional schools are affiliated to, to state universities, sir. All professional schools are affiliated to state university yeah, but, but, that makes that 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 makes it me, anyway let me not go into that polemic yeah, let me come back to yeah. oh i'm not standing sir <laughs> thank let you just, all right let me uh, proceed again as i was saying we have a situation we should actually accept it one of the consequences that we had uh, we have in the northwest and southwest region was because we simply stood up to decry certain conditions which are actually true the president himself said it, that there may be some problem, and it is time for us to forgive and move ahead. That's it. We stood up because there was a marginalization. I have never said that there was no problem. There was a problem. But people picking arms against the, uh, picking arms and insulting the republic, it's time for us to stop them so that we can construct our country. Look at the backwardness of the northwest and the southwest region due to this crisis. There was rapid development. Boya was the Silicon Valley. Everything was moving on smoothly. Now we are the ones crying. So it is time for us to tell these guys to stop all this nonsense so that we can construct our region. We should not play around because we want to look good in front of these guys, knowing that if you condemn them, you will not go back to the, you will not feel free in the Northwest and the Southwest. I am condemning them and I'm still going to the Northwest. I was there last month and I'll keep on going there and I'll keep on condemning those that are pick up arms against the state because they are the one delaying the development of our two regions. I'll keep on saying it no matter where, anyhow, I will keep on saying okay. this. We'll keep on uh, saying that um, greetings to the panel. Uh, thanks for the great insights of uh, blaming the root situation in the country on insecurity is merely looking for dry branches to hang on. Atia insists uh, the problem may be spiritual. Is he suggesting we need national deliverance prayers uh, for our roots? <laughs> if so, we should take the lead. Uh, Ima Nkong, writing there from, uh, from, from Boya, good evening to you, Ima. Um, Mr. Kingsley Ndiwa, watching from Libreville in Gabon. I like your program. Let that uh, man stop uh, saying lies. Thanks uh, to Barista Ashu and Apostle Ambi for telling the truth. <laughs> okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. How can this you <laughs> be telling lies <laughs> about the construction of roads which was given out uh, before the crisis? When I see young men telling lies, I bleed. And if an old woman is seeing this... <laughs> Nelson is writing from Holland. Yeah, but Nelson, we have uh, rights to opinions now. Good evening to you all, uh, Mr. Liu. Keja is not serious. Ask him if there is 
uh, Amber Boys in Simalen, Yaounde, Uturut. Andy is writing from Cyprus. Good evening to you. Good evening, Mr. Liu. The money sent uh, to councils for the construction of so much, like, uh, for example, since 2017, money had been sending to Santa Council, but the mayor had done nothing with the money with the construction of roads. Uh, he uses it to buy his car. Eric. <laughs> It's right. <laughs> From Momenda. Yeah. Good evening, uh, Mr. Liu. Courage to you all in the studio. How can uh, someone say, talk of insecurity when he has said it is uh, on this platform that everything is under control? It's Elvis Brown writing from Shell, New Bell. Good evening to you, Elvis Brown. We are talking of reconstructing these two regions. Should the construction of these uh, two routes uh, be the symbol of the actual reconstruction of the the regions because if we want our contractors to get in can should we not start by fixing these roads mr liu mm -hmm. let us face facts mm -hmm. this government in place has a proven track record the twin highway that is like constructed how many years have they reached Wala? Mr. Kedia, I want you to show me the Amber Group that is on the Yaoundé Wala Highway. That is hindering construction works. Because you say it's the Amber Boys that are stopping them from working. Which Amber Group is on the Yaoundé Wala Highway that is stopping the people from working? I will not talk of Wala. Even inside the city of Wala, how many flyovers have been cancelled? Mr. Kidder. How many look at Rope? No, we should face facts. You are government has failure of flag flying failure in road construction. So please, I am saying that the monies exist on paper. There should be a road construction gate going on there. Are the monies available in the field? I don't think so. Mr. Leo said companies are refusing to take tenders. If there is money, you company will, and then there is military protection, will companies refuse to take tender. If you take tender, you go and work. Six, six months, they don't give you money. Will you continue working? There is a problem there, and that is look, what has stopped work on the what has caused the work on the Dwana Yahudi not to progress is the same thing that is affecting Babaju Wameda. And I think that they should not try to, to blame it on insecurity. They tried it in the north. It was given to Jini Militaire. Was it soft? Let us read in the north. Come to Dwala here. This they do, this uh, uh, new road, Bebanda, to Bonamusadi here, was given to Jini Militaire. He stood idle for two or three years until the day that a case was introduced in the Special Criminal Court construction was resumed. Misappropriation. Even in the military, misappropriation. <clears throat> the moment that colonel who was heading the construction was taken to TCS. Um, excuse, excuse me. Uh, Eli, definitely there is a problem with the sound. So many people are complaining about the sound uh, issue. You guys should look into it. Let's go. Yes, I'm saying that there is a problem with the financing because each time they have to construct a road, it is a big problem. Whether that road is inside town or linking to towns. I want, I'm taking just here, here, under our nose here, between Mbanya, Sable and uh, Nouvelle Road, Bepanda. That road was given to Jenny Militaire. And it was abandoned for, they did one small part and abandoned it for years. But the day that colonel was taken to special criminal court, construction was resumed until we started seeing a road. There is something in that Baba place. They are not telling us the truth. There is something that that money is disappearing. They should show us where the money is. The money is disappearing. Don't put it on Amber Boys because we know that the army can contain Amber Boys on that road. Con bring the monies and construct the road. Something is happening there. I think that the Mafia Road is a glaring example 
Maveron was budgeted fully. At, was it Kojifa or Saddam? That, Saddam and Kojifa and Dehu. That road was fully budgeted. Saddam constructed the flyover. Kojifa constructed Kumba. Uh, right of the flyover, then Dehu took from there to Muti. Mr. Take there. You say that there is issue. What stopped them at that time from finishing the road? You cannot tell us. Okay. Some of the equipment was carried from there and taken to some plantations in the south. And you people never said anything. Cinema carried equipment from there straight to their place. You people said nothing. You want to tell us? I say it is misappropriation. That money made for that road is not being applied for the purpose. They should tell us the truth and stop lying. Okay. Uh, the sound problem is that it speak uh, when <laughs> Senior Barista Ashu has uh, the mic. Can we, um, I don't know, you may have to be sharing the mic with uh, Senior Barista uh, 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 uh? <laughs> No, please, uh, stop, stop that. Why would I? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a technician. Please. Stop. <laughs> you know, even the gods of the mic have a way of doing their things. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I guess uh, the fellow Eric accusing the mayor of Santa has ample proofs to his allegation. Let him stop being excited over something he knows little about. The council takes care of farm to market routes and not national routes, and the mayor has not uh, relented his efforts uh, in realizing that uh, that is Derek Walla writing there. Good evening, Mr. Liu. The problem of road constructions in Cameroon is spiritual. As Mr. Atia actually said, there is a consortium between Cameroon and the RDC to construct the road linking the two countries. RDC finished their part of the project since 2019, and Cameroon is still yet to complete theirs. The Bonis uh, Toboro route and many more. There is uh, truly a problem with the ministry. Bukuka Felix, writing from Kribi, greetings to my classmate Atia. Actually, I don't know whether I know him. Uh, good evening to you, Mr. Liu, all the gentlemen on the program. I always enjoy following your programs. I wish to ask if we had Amber Boys in the construction of those stadiums that were supposed to be used for hosting the AFCON. Please, let us uh, say things the way they are. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Hi, Mr. Liu. Greetings to the house. Uh, please let Apostle Lambe educate Kedia. It seems to be ignorant. Uh, it's Aisha writing from Kambe. Good evening to you. Aisha, good evening, Mr. Liu. One reason of the crisis is because most of the routes were abandoned or constructed for a long time and many other reasons. So why did the government wait for the crisis before programming the Bamenda Babaju route on the Kumba Mundemba route? Uh, Mr. Eric is writing from Boya. Apostle Ambe Valentine Ngwa. Um, should these roads be made priority projects in these two regions? That is the Kumba, uh, Ekondo Titi uh, stretch, and the Bamenda Babaju. Yes, I think the government is only increasing its enemies mm. by abandoning these roads. You know, people are disgruntled in the northwest and the southwest, not for the same reason. There are many reasons why individuals are angry. Before the Ambazonia uprising even came. People were disgruntled for underdevelopment. And I think that was a root cause that sparked up this crisis. I think if the government can retrace its step and then go back to the root and then start arranging those things that teachers and lawyers and individuals started complaining about, they will help solve this problem <coughs> to a greater extent. We are calling on the government to make sure that these roads are put into place. I wish to ask that what was the reconstruction committee counting on before coming to carry out uh, campaigns for reconstruction. What were they relying on financially? What were they relying on in terms of security? They should tell us because they shouldn't have just come and said, okay, reconstruction is about to go on. It's just like it's hypnotism and a kind of enticement to the poor northern and southwest. When people feel cheated and then you come again to disappoint them, you are adding more salt to injury. And I think that by what happened, that erupted this crisis, the reconstruction committee that came up was supposed to be a beacon of hope, a kind of light that was supposed to give assurance that 
you can still restore our trust because I think what is broken between the government and the public two region is trust. And if that trust is restored, every other thing will be taken care of. Let us consider lies we were told before. I think those lies should be turned to truth now to give them assurance that we have repented because repentance is making a U-turn from the evil we have been committing. I think if the government makes a U-turn, the Reconstruction Committee should tell us what we are counting on financially, counting on in terms of security, counting on in terms of manpower in order to carry out this reconstruction. If at all they focus on bringing back these roads in place, I'm telling you they might have solved at least 50% of this problem because what? Roads are the major link between markets, industries, companies, and as a matter of fact, commercial activities cannot be boosted as far as roads are not in order. Businesses have collapsed. Their individuals who just get frustrated to even travel again because when they stand and imagine or sit and imagine the kind of road they are going to carry their goods through, it becomes very difficult. So I think this time was a time where they were supposed to have been given the opportunities for people to exercise a certain level of trust back to the government. We are almost afraid because most of the things spoken in these regions are always on paper. But what is spoken in other regions are actualized. Hospitals are actualized in the south. Universities are actualized in the south. Air seaports are actualized in the south. But the seaport in the north southwest is still on paper. The, the other things are still on paper. So I think we should get into action to convince the masses of the north and the south that we are not just living together, we are eating together. And if they emphasize or they lay emphasis on constructing these roads in the north and the southwest, I'm sure they will give a, a sense of belonging. Because I think what is missing now is like a child in a family who feels like he's not part of the family. The father has a responsibility to give this child assurance that you are part and parcel of this family by giving the child the privileges that he he gives to all the other children in the house that is wisdom needed to cope what we are going through right now and to even think of the fact about security there are forces stationed in all almost everywhere in the northwest region that is enough security we know that there are some particular places where the tension is very high we could say okay those environments are too hot for now let us go to the environments where the, the tension has been cracked down to a greater extent. I think if we manage those environments and start showing good faith by starting to construct in some of those areas, we don't have too much pressure around Matazem. We don't have pressure in Kambe. Some places in Wum, we don't have pressure there. In the center town of Amenda, we don't have so much pressure there. If at all, they attempted carrying out these activities, and started doing some work for its five kilometers, ten kilometers road, it will be somehow, I mean, appealing and it can even attract the attention of the masses. Let me tell you something. If people who really want the development of North and Southwest see people who come to fight when reconstruction starts, the indices of that environment will rise against the poor community. Okay. That's okay. The uh, thanks, Mr. Liu and panel, for the good job. We are excited uh, watching you live from Washington. Uh, DC, the United States, uh, good evening to you. Good evening, Mr. Liu. What is happening to the mile two to mile one stretch of road in Limbe? This road was maintained in uh, 2016, and before two years, the road was in a deplorable stage. Now, again, it's uh, under maintenance. That is uh, money which would have been used to construct the mile four Boya road uh, through Sase which is dilapidated. Is this also because of Amber Boys? Uh, Lizzie is writing from uh, Limbe. Good evening to you people over there. I hope some of us uh, youth know what we are saying. Elections went on well in the Northwest and Southwest. Why is it only the projects that we are seeing, Amber Boys? Uh, money from uh, writing from Bangem. Good evening to you, uh, money from Bangem. Mr. Liu, good evening. Uh, the debate in the studio is trading. The problem cannot be insecurity because everybody we see the military escorting brasserie trucks into town as well as petrol tankers. Why can they not also protect the construction of these routes? PMDA is writing from Bomenda. Uh, good evening uh, to you people in the studio. Thank you all for the great work you guys are doing. Please give the microphone that is uh, disturbing to Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I hope that <laughs> I hope that the problem has been fixed. Um, we've changed uh, Barista's uh, microphone. 
the sacrifice mine to him. Okay. Yes. Yes. So that they should not accuse me of. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a technician. They say you're the one. I don't know how I can be doing that. Okay. Uh, Tilarus Atia, um, do you have the impression that government is taking these two uh, routes uh, stretch as um, priority? And uh, the fact that they are not doing so, is it foiling the anger in the population? Well, I think these roads are, are priority projects. Mm. Uh, they are priority roads. Uh, the Bamenda Babaji Road and also the Phoenix, that is part of the Bamenda Ring Road, uh, I think is a priority project for government. When uh, the DM is first of all, this was President Bamenda in 1993. He promised that he was going to personally supervise, and I think he should be reminded that the road he promised to personally supervise uh, has not been delivered and uh, promised. Uh, it is also a priority project <coughs> because uh, in 2015, when they launched the uh, three year building plan, uh, the Kumba, Kumba City Road was one of those projects in the plan. Uh, and <coughs> it was supposed to be constructed in 24 months for uh, a budget of about 38.5 uh, billion pounds uh, To show that it was an emergency project, it was important, it was put in the plan. But to date, it has been realized. It is true that, uh, like I said, <coughs> that on the of, uh, that, that, uh, in the course of the project, on the 15th of March uh, 2018, uh, focus with the company was kidnapped by non-state armed groups. Uh, that when the, the anti-terrorism squad of the D, the Rapid Intervention Battalion, went to to rescue the hostages, uh, one of the Tunisian engineers, seeing the Tunisian company to withdraw from the project. But then, a month after the incident, the government gave assurances that the security was going to be provided for the company to resume work. And we are, that was done in April of 2018. That assurances were given that the work was going to, going to resume. Until then, nothing is happening on that portion of the road. So I, I think that government machinery is not grinding the way it should be grinding. Uh, like, like I said, Public policy is, is what government chooses to do or not to do. And so if, in this case, the government is not realizing the project, then it means this government policy to not realize these projects the way they, they, they chose to realize them. Because even the, 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 the three-year emergency plan that government wrote out to the tune of about 925 billion francs, there's nothing to show for. We are yet to see any project of that in that plan that has been realized and commissioned and put at the service of Cameroonians. When you look at the, uh, the they were going to construct 800 uh, low-cost houses, low-cost houses, 100 for, for, eight, for each of the eight uh, regions of the country, excluding the center and littoral. None of those projects have been realized completely of course. and handed over to Cameroonians yes. for, for, for use. So it means that a project that was supposed to be realized in one year. It was launched in, uh, in 2016, okay. and it was it's supposed to take one year. Till today, we see the Minister of uh, Urban Development rushing from one region to the other, supervising that are supervising houses. I don't know if this is a means for them to get mission allowances and every other thing, or, or, or it is actually with good intention to really supervise this project and, and, and see to it that they are realized. And these projects that are not being realized are the, are the reason for the many problems that we have in the country. Because when the three-year emergency plan was rolled out, government said it was going to provide employment for, uh, I think, uh, 35,000 youths in the country. When the, the Babaju, Bamenda Road, and the, the Kumba, Kumba Sea Road were supposed to be constructed, government said upon completion, it was going to provide jobs for about uh, 30,000 Cameroonian youths, in, and, and also women. So if both are going to be realized, it means that for the Kumba Kumba City Road, there are 30,000 youths that are not employed because the road has not been completed. Yeah. The uh, emergency plan that President Bia wrote out in 2015 that was supposed to run to 2017, some of the projects like the Kumba Kumba City Road are still not realized, and the project was supposed to have the projects in that plan were supposed to have been realized by the end of 2017. So it means that 35,000 uh, uh, 35, youths have not had jobs because this plan has not been realized like the president wanted. And it may interest you to know that some of these youths may be in the bushes taking up arms. Because some people are in the bushes carrying, up, carrying, up, carrying an arms, not because of the one independence or anything, but because of their frustration. frustration. There are people who might have gone to jaggy houses, taking loans, 
set up a business and the business is destroyed maybe by the crisis who knows and these people think that okay because there's no way i can pay back this money let me go to into the bush where these people cannot find me so i can repay and that is why some of them are in the bushes so i think that the failure of the state to realize some of these projects to provide basic amenities somebody talked about uh, brewery products uh, reaching uh, suburbs of the yes. country who benefits when these things get there it is the multinationals yes, but course. when five bone water when electricity goes to the hinterlands the who benefits and if this development if these roads had been constructed i'm not sure the military will have Difficult. the kind of problems they have today to handle the security situations in the country and the head of state is the the guarantor of internal and external security of the country and because this road these roads these road, this projects and everything hinges on the security of the country it should be taken as a security concern that this road should and must be constructed in record time okay must be uh, constructed in record time i'll take a few messages and we continue Good evening, Mr. Liu, and you are intelligent uh, panelist. Uh, the reason why roads are abandoned is for other politicians to use it for campaign speech and for us to vote for them. You realize that all our politicians use bed roads and uh, provision of pipe bond water to campaign, which uh, they don't provide. Sumbele Kelvin is writing from uh, Kong Samba. Esther, writing from Yaoundé, says, Good evening, Mr. Liu, to the panelist, uh, Mr. Leo, the crisis is not uh, the problem of that uh, road. That road has been like that for years. I live in Ekondo in 1994, and it was the same condition. Lister Montana, writing from Yaoundé, says, uh, Greetings, Mr. Liu, and the panelists, a uh, lack of proper follow-up in our is our problem in uh, the country. Good evening to you, Lister. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. <coughs> I really do enjoy your program. We have to be realistic that the constitution, uh, okay, you want to write the construction work on the Bamen, the Babaju was uh, disrupted by the Amber Boys. Uh, the government opted to complete the project using Jini Militaire, but the World Bank was not okay with it and did a questionnaire, but the population refused the Jini Militaire. So we should not blame the government. George is writing from Bomenda. Thank you for that information. Good evening, Mr. Liu and uh, guys, uh, Mr. Ngo, writing from Pinja, if the government truly wants uh, to repair those routes, why can they not uh, deploy more military to protect the contractors during working hours? Many caterpillars have been burnt down because of security uh, reasons. Uh, happy to be part of the program, Mr. Liu. Keep on with the program. Your panelists are always well selective and are always to the point. I'm happy following the topic of today and it's very interesting. Good evening, uh, Mr. Liu. Um, Kedia, now, what should be uh, the actions of uh, the state in the days and months ahead uh, to reassure the people uh, that everything is going to be okay? Um, as I earlier said, uh, the minister came out and he actually said that uh, there will be a change, a uh, movement to a new uh, contractor to ensure that uh, this uh, contract is being executed. So we just Can we take a short break, please? I will slap you in. Okay, uh, Kelly, I was asking what should be uh, the actions in the next uh, days, weeks, and months uh, to assure the people that uh, effective works are going to uh, be done to also permit persons to easily uh, flow into uh, the Northwest region and, and the division in the Southwest region. 
Yes, for sure. You realize that uh, not only the movement of people from the west region, littoral, the central region to the northwest, we also have the movement of goods that live from northwest to uh, littoral and the rest that feed uh, children that belongs to that region that they are now in uh, littoral and the rest. So the situation of this road actually, as I earlier said, is not good at all. But the government has put in place strict measures to ensure that the construction will be done. The new company that the government is working with, we believe that uh, with the collaboration, this road will be constructed. I call on all uh, Northwesterners of goodwill to collaborate all citizens should collaborate with their elected officials. Uh, this will give an opportunity uh, for elected officials to work in collaboration uh, with the government to ensure that uh, this road is, final, uh, is finally constructed. Please, I just want to be clear, uh, we should not take this problem to be very, very political. We already have many crises, we already have the present crisis, so we should not take everything to be political. The issue of roads should not become political or anything should become political. We should also know that there are other regions in Cameroon that have problems of roads, like the Northwest and like the Southwest region. We should also know that there are other regions that have problem of water and the rest. So please, we have a problem of road. It is a problem. The Bameda Babaji Road is a very serious problem. But please, we should not uh, politicize it unless we uh, want this crisis to persist. Instead, we should collaborate with the government so that this could uh, be constructed. We should also tell our boys that have decided to pick up arms that uh, they should understand that uh, road network is what uh, the people actually need. Uh, our people, our women are being transported through these roads to the hospital to give birth. Those that are sick, they actually use this road. Uh, this road is used for the transportation of a uh, good that is needed to be consumed by still uh, most of us that are origin from this region. So it is time for us to collaborate, work together, rather than politicizing the problem. Because if we start to politicize everything, judicial system will politicize it, uh, educational system will politicize it, roads will politicize it, everything will politicize it, uh, regional house have been put in place, we criticize them. When men of God want to talk, we criticize them and insult them. When our chiefs want to talk, we discredit them, then we'll actually go nowhere. So it's time for us to collaborate with all our institutions, empower our institutions, so okay. that they'll be able to fight for our own interests. Okay. <laughs> okay, we are going to move straight to our second topic for tonight. Uh, sorry, um, the sound issues. They are disturbing at times, so <laughs> at times we have to. <laughs> yes, um, we are moving straight to our second topic, uh, Senior Barista. I, we are asking the question whether ministers must um, work with high instructions uh, from the head of state to be able to do uh, their job. What then is their role as ministers? Uh, Mr. Leo, this is simply a question of personality court. Mm. You see, um, some people believe that once they are appointed, if you enter their office, they must, you must have the picture of the head of state put in prominent position behind them so that whoever just enters that door sees that picture and knows that this is a staunch supporter. In the same way, when you give something to them, please don't feel targeted. To. If something is given to them as a job, they want to make the world believe that all the credit that goes to the execution of that job has to be sent to the head of state. But they fail to see that if there is failure, it will also go back to the head of state. So it is a boomerang. You are appointed to a post of responsibility. You are supposed to assume that responsibility, you assume that office. Take responsibility. It is not Mr. Pobia who has to serve as SDU once he appoints an SDU. He's not the one. The SDU is his representative. When a matter comes before you, you, Mr. SDU, solve it. Leave pres president alone. High instruction. It changes nothing. It is just a matter of personality cult, which makes some, some of these people feel that when they say that the president will feel that they are supporting him. 
But I want them to understand that that type of support, that is that type of lip service. That lip service goes to nowhere. Because by your very appointment, Mr. Bia has given you a mandate. So it, it doesn't serve any purpose for you to tell to remind us that is high instruction. If you say it was a low one, we would have understood you. But high one is that high instruction that appointed you there. So it is just a matter of personality cult. They want to be seen by the president as people who are respecting him, people who are making the president to be loved by the people. They are constructing a bridge over the Wuri. You are sent to come and inspect by high instruction, President. I have come to ins inspect the bridge, <laughs> the construction work on the bridge. Go look how work you go on the stadium. High instruction of head of state. Go preside over major national dialogue. High instruction of head of state. If head of state wanted the world to know that he was giving high instruction, why did he appoint you to preside? You see, it doesn't make sense. I think people should. Uh, remember that when the president gives them an opportunity it is for them to use their intellect to come out with solutions use your intellect and come out with solutions stop making reference to high high or very high instructions received in most cases the president has not actually not given any special instructions in that case they are simply just try, trying to blow their egos mm. so that they can be seen as doing a very good job. Okay. Uh, which is not even the case. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and all uh, watch the program Prince from Hellenic uh, Republic of Greece. The issues of road in Cameroon has uh, ever been storytelling and play talks of, for political ambition. I think the government is not serious and has no vision for people of the Southwest. Uh, the, everything has ever remained promises and lies are telling. Uh, good evening, Apostle Lambe Valentine Ngoa. No. Is this also uh, a core symbol of the over centralization of power in the country? It's the one we say firm instructions or high instructions. How high is this instruction? Mm -hmm. Because most of the high instructions are not obeyed. It was a high instruction from the head of state that they should control COVID 19, and the high instruction ended in the pocket of people. How high is that instruction? It was a high instruction and a firm one from the head of state that people should take a uh, 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 distribution of properties to the, the, the Bata regions, the north and the southwest. Most of that money ended in the pocket of ministers. How high is that instruction? Because when we use the president's name, because I, I am very objective. A lot of ministers take the president's name to commit their atrocities like an ID card they use to carry out their atrocities in this country and then blame somebody who is not responsible. I think when they defend budget in the parliament, a minister is giving a budget under his ministry to carry out the activities of that year. One of the things I've been asking is, because I was watching the Ghanaian parliament, even headmasters and tech principals in secondary schools are brought before the parliament to defend their accomplishment per annum. Our ministers go to defend budget. They don't defend what they have executed with that budget. Why do we defend budget to be given and we don't defend their previous budget? Of course. Mm. Why don't they defend? Now, when they say high is from the head of state, when a, a head of state gives an instruction and the assignment is not carried, how high is that instruction? Because it's the president that gave others the means of health to carry out the COVID-19 <coughs> stuff campaign. 50 billion was stolen. Are you sure that instruction was high? It means it came from a high position and they lowered it at the level of the ministry. Do these ministers in this country respect and fear the president with the claim that he gave them high instruction before they see embezzled budgets that are given to them to accomplish major things? We are talking about roads when ministers can eat money that can take care of people's health. If humans health doesn't mean anything to our ministers. Do you think it is the road from Matazen to Bamenda that will mean anything to them? When um, inanimate objects, when would they become important when animate objects have no, no essence in the lives of people? So if we are talking about high instruction, to me, the president's name is used as a license to penetrate the unaccomplished, their self-interest. 
That is why you see that when people are trying to say we are biased, we are not CPDM. Because they have come to realize that there is a big gap between the president and these people. The activities they carry out in this country does not reflect the order from the president. In the days of Somo Sankara, Sankara will not give a project and you do not go to accomplish that project. Secondly, if the instruction came from the head of state, I am very, very sure a committee should be sent for everything that has been done to be verified. The high instructions for the construction of a uh, uh, stadia for, to host the Nations Cup. Of course, which was mismanaged. What was the, what was the team? What was the purpose? What was the, if it came from the president, then I think a team was supposed to be sent to confirm what the president said. You cannot give high instruction without a verifiable reason. Where are the people sent to clarify the fact that this instruction was wrong? If you tell me an instruction is high, the, 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 the highness of that instruction should be the obedience of the instruction, not the pronouncement of that instruction. Hmm. Because a lot of people do the pronouncement of the high instruction, they don't do the obedience of the high instruction. So it makes the instruction irrelevant because it is high in pronouncement, it's not high in obedience. What makes an instruction relevant and it proves the authenticity of its source is when it is executed because a high hand gave the command. Not when it is pronounced as a high instruction, then it is downplayed like a trash when it comes to execution. Okay. Atia Tilar is... Uh, uh is this also actually undermining the position of the prime minister he's the head of government but almost every minister now makes reference to high instructions from the head of state high instruction when there is a head of government uh, well some of them actually down the president of government at some point so it cannot only be reduced to the head of state but then when uh, they claim that the instruction is from the head of state uh, they always say high instructions but believe you me some of these ministers have never met the head of state uh, apart from the regular uh, new year wishes where they shake hands with the head of state they've never met the head of state a few of them have had just about 30 minutes or that about sitting where the head of state is I think that the last time that was in 2018 when they had a council of, a council of ministers meeting at the presidency that lasted for about 30 minutes or thereabout. And uh, the other, the only other opportunities that these ministers have, to, some of them, to interact with the head of state is on National Day, where they are part of the crowd that goes to eat at the presidency. Uh, others uh, also have the privilege of sitting in the tribune when the head of state is there. Apart from that, that is all. No, very few of them have communication, constant communication with the head of state. So, oftentimes they come out and they, they deceive the masses that the head of state has said this, has said that. I said deceive because when they come for campaigns, they say the head of state has asked us to say this or say that. But then when the masses present needs, for example, the masses have presented the need for the Kumba Ekunusi Road to be tarred. They have said the Baba Jubamenda Road should be tarred. They have presented these grievances to the parliamentarians, the senators, the ministers, all those who claim to have contacts and communication with the head of state. And the head of state is here to react. It means that there is a gap somewhere. There must be something wrong somewhere. So whenever they say uh, on the high instructions of the head of state and not of the head of government, <laughs> it is because these people have the impression that because the prime minister is appointed at 5 p.m. and they are appointed at 8 p.m., it is not possible that from five between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m., the prime minister would have been consulted he would have brought a list, they would have scrutinized to see that, okay, we appointed you at 5 p.m., okay, come. The time he would take to drive to the presidency to meet the head of state before he make proposals on the government of our 62 member government for the prime minister to make all his proposals, I'm not sure it's possible. So some people believe that the head of government does not have a role to play in the appointment of ministers. So they think that their allegiance is to the head of state. And this is, the, the, the constitution uh, says that uh, in, I think Article 10 of the Constitution uh, says that the head of state shall appoint the prime minister, and upon his upon his proposal, he shall appoint other members of government. And they say the head of state has the sole power to appoint these ministers, members of government, and dismiss them whenever he pleases. So it means that the head of state does not need to, for example, consult the prime minister again before he dismisses a minister. So that's why I think that when things are not going on right. It is the responsibility is laid at the footstep of the head of state because Article uh, 5 sub 2 of the Constitution says that the head of state is the symbol 
of national unity. That's why you see his effigy in every public office. Whether it is the SDF that is using the Bamina Congress or the head of state's effigy will be placed where it is. Whether it is uh, the UPC who is mayor of a council, the head of state's effigy is there, not because the, his worship as an individual, but because the constitution says that he is the symbol of national unity. So as a symbol of state, just like the national flag that is a symbol, it is placed in all public buildings. So, Even and other that, that same provision, like Article 5 sub 2 says that the man who is a symbol of national unity shall define the policy of the nation. And if the policy of the nation is that road has started, construction started in 2010, and in 2021 it is not realized for something that was supposed to take two years, then something is wrong somewhere. We cannot keep on saying that the instructions are from the head of state when it is for good things, and when, it's for ba when, it, when it goes bad, like the COVID gate, nobody is bold enough to say no these instructions are from the head of state so it means that whenever they say the instructions are from the head of state they may be lying and if they are lying they should be exposed okay. and the only person to expose them is the head of state who has that power to appoint them and dismiss them okay good evening panelists it is uh, quite unfortunate the Cameroon government had not taken roads as a priority come to think of uh, the Bermuda woman wrote uh, to be supervised personally by Uga himself is now history the Amber boys uh, should not be blamed one quarter of roads in Pretoria, South Africa, are more than roads in the whole of Cameroon because they take roads as priority. Countless flyovers are any country dreaming to emerge in back on roads network. Bad governance is uh, the problem. Uh, good evening to you and thank you for the uh, participation. Uh, hello, good evening. I'm uh, Philemon Mbu. Please, why is it that uh, in Cameroon everything comes from the president? What are the ministries doing? Are they not uh, the ones to take projects to the president or tell the president things to be done in their various ministries? Basically, nothing can be done if everything is coming from the president. Yeah, is this not also do you do you, do you? just to add that the the constitution says that Bia appoints them and defines their duties. Mm. So it's not, it's not possible for a minister who is appointed to start acting because the constitution says in Article 10 that he will appoint them and define what they should do. So whatever they do is what the president has asked them to do. That's my imagination, except maybe uh, the COVID gate that the BIAM might not have asked them to go and embrace them. I'm not sure. Okay, yes. Um, the first thing we should be clear with is that uh, the people of Cameroon <coughs> elected uh, His Excellency President Paul Bia. They did not elect ministers. And so the constitution permit uh, the president of the republic to appoint uh, with collaboration with the prime minister to appoint these ministers to execute his uh, his electoral promises to his people. And so he has the right to go straight through the prime minister and give instruction to this uh, minister because they are his electoral promises that he must execute. That one is not anything that we negotiate about. That is what is done in any country, in all countries in the world. Now, talking about uh, the, the, the ideology of high instruction from the head of state, uh, please, we should not come out to say that all decisions from ministers or all decision ministers take is uh, over high instruction from the head of state. No. They receive high instruction, yes. But we have ministers also that uh, have their own private initiative that has also been welcomed by many people. We talk about the Minister of Secondary Education. We saw how she, uh, to, to cut away corruption in school milieu, he decided that school fees should be paid in, uh, in the bank. That was her initiative that we need to upload. And many other ministers do have their own initiative. Now, talking about the President of the Republic giving high instruction, yes, we should not forget that uh, the President appoint these ministers after looking at their moral decadence and value. But we should also know that change is constant. So if the president look at moral value and appoint ministers, and later on, these ministers that had good value and they were appointed because of that, they turn to become very corrupt. Moral values. Not, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, they were appo they appointed based on their moral value. That is one of the uh, uh, options that the president uh, decide. But if after the appointment, they decide to engage into uh, embezzlement, the president would definitely uh, send uh, uh, Allah justice to take its course. Why are all of us here not saying, uh, uh, coming out to be very clear that uh, the audit that has been that took place a few uh, days ago is instruction from the head of state? 
We have high instruction from the head of state that have sent many uh, former ministers in prison, be it from uh, 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 the presidency, be it minister of finance. They are there. Auditing. High instruction from the head of state. So we should be realistic when we are analyzing all these things and to see that these are the instructions the head of state have taken and it is very correct. Yes, I can give you an instruction that uh, Mr. Tilarius, Mr. Ambe do this. Yes, it is a high instruction. But if you decide to carry on it and you do it your own way, then justice will definitely hit on you. So if uh, the head of state give an instruction and they go astray, we, we then they should be are we aware are we that justice will be done. Okay. Then there is also something I want to make it clear. Okay. We also have a minister delegate that are based at the presidency that naturally they get instruction also directly from the head of state and also from uh, the prime minister. So we should be able to distinguish. We have ministers. Ministers get their instruction from the prime minister. But we have minister delegates that are linked with the presidency, that they collaborate with the presidency as the way their ministry is being spelled out. They collaborate with the president and they receive high instruction directly. It is very, very clear. So we should not mix all these things up. For sure, yes, all of them. But they are answerable to the Prime okay. Minister and directly to the Presidency. The Prime Minister makes the proposals? No, there is this thing I want to make it clear. We should not come and say that a uh, Prime Minister is appointed and four hours after he appoints his minister. So we think that before a president appoints a Prime Minister, he does not discuss with that Prime Minister. Okay. He discusses with the person. Mm. And they accept, and he gives him his project. This is what I want. And the Prime Minister accepts. And after that, the Prime Minister is appointed. Uh, uh, and before his appointment, they have collaborated and they brought out their list. So we should be aware of all this. Okay. Uh, Senior uh, Barisa, can we also say that uh, because of this, initiatives are killed, people are afraid to take, um, to venture into doing what they think is right because they may contradict what the, the source of the high instructions always. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Liu. Uh, before I reach that, I, I touch that part, I think there's something I want to clarify. Mm. We should not confuse the, emblem, the, the, the symbols of the state with the symbols of the institution, of the organs of the state. The state has three organs, the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. The executive has as head the president. We also have the judiciary that has uh, its own head. We also have the uh, legislative that has its own head. So if we have to use people's pictures to represent the state, it will not be Mr. Bia alone. It will be the president, the president of the Senate who is second in command, and then uh, the man of the judiciary. The, the state, the symbols of the state, the national flag, and what many people never even think of, the coat of arms. The coat of arms. Many people never even think of it. You see, those are the symbols of the state, not somebody's picture. The president is the symbol of the executive, sir. Not the state, the executive. The symbols of the state, the national flag, the coat of arms. arms. So I think we should have that one clear. Now, uh, you just ask a question which depicts the very nature of the Cameroonian civil servant. Mr. Liu, take a document, go to any government office here, write down in Douala, ask them to sign you a commitment. That document will travel right up to Yaoundé. Nobody is ready to sign any commitment in any government office. Try this. Why you take it and say, this has to go to my boss. That boss, next boss. I have a matter in the Bonaberry Court of First Instance. It was adjourned for the legal department to present written submissions because people from Minister of Commerce who are incompetent in that field, they came and closed down a gas, somebody, a gas, gas traders depot, a, a, a store. We took them to court. Now they want for the legal department to give an opinion. They have to ask their boss. Their boss has asked Yaoundé. Until Yaoundé answers, they caught three months running for a referendum. Uh, 
urgent motion three months running this is something that's supposed to get finished in one week maximum we have waiting for three three months you see this thing is the canker worm that finishes the Cameroonian civil service because if you ask any person to take a, a, an official commitment it is not possible sir he will he did not he will tell you that he didn't appoint himself somebody appointed him so this is delicate for me to tell you something here i have to ask my boss so Cameroonian civil servants have to be trained to take responsibility that is not the case in the field they are afraid to take responsibility. they are afraid to take responsibility mm -hmm. and that is why they always fall back on high instructions okay uh good evening mr liu it is uh, the president who is a national symbol and not his picture thanks uh, mr njo is writing from bomenda good evening to you mr njo good evening mr liu i'm enjoying the program i remember when some ministers <laughs> had an accident en route to marwa <laughs> and one of them said <laughs> 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 one of them said, <laughs> wow. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> okay, I was to be my time, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, quite funny. The um, apostle and be Valentine Ngoa. Now, is this not also uh, because of politics where uh, the president happens to be a the national chairman of the ruling party and when even elites because Ima Nkong is, is raising the issue elites are also prone to that that you supply a uh, borehole to your to, to to the people of your village you say it's a gift from, from the state. president of the republic oh. and that um, normally what the government is supposed to do you provide schools it's a gift of the head of state Yes, it's purely a, a party politics stuff. You know, the aim of the CBDM party is to always project itself as the best political party in Cameroon. And by so doing, they have to project the, the national chairman, what happens to be the president of the republic. By so doing, they want to give us an impression that without the president, nothing can be done in the country. But that's a, a, an error for anybody who understands how people's potentials operate. When individuals are appointed by a president, it is their skill and their intelligence that goes into action. The president is not gifted. The president is not intelligent in almost every area. So if we link everything to the president, it's a clear indication that our own minds have been removed. And the president mind is what is being used in our minds to carry out activities. Why don't we appreciate people for their ability and their potentials in certain offices? We attribute everything to the head of state. The head of state is responsible for electricity, responsible for water, responsible for buildings, responsible for light, responsible for everything. Can the head of state be that skillful in carrying out all these activities and presenting them effectively? Is the head of state a politician? Is he an electrician? Is he a civil engineer? Is he a construction engineer? Is he a pilot? That almost everything done in the country is attributed to him. That alone tells us that the people are somehow caged to an extent that they cannot glorify any other person but the head of state. It's very bad. And secondly, in every nation, there are heroes. When heroes do things, they appreciate them. When you go to South Africa, you will not only see the statue of Mandela, you will see the statue of Archbishop Montutu, who has also done something for the state. It's to tell you that an individual cannot build a state. But a country where every glory is attached to an individual tells us that all of our brains have been removed and we are using the one man's brain to run the country. Eh? Yes, it's very, very dangerous. So you can never hear somebody is applauded for something that they accomplished. Why do we center everything being done to the head of state? As if the budget of the state is the head of state's personal energy <sighs> that he uses to work that money for distributing it to ministries. A ministry does something through does something through a minister who is intelligent from state budget, we thank the head of state. Money given for, for parliamentary grants, which is state budget for parliamentarians, they put bottled water, we thank the head of state. Is the state budget the head of state budget? Because we have to separate the salary from the head of state and the budget of the state. That is what the challenge is. Now, even when money is being used, that is why you see we glorify some parliamentarians who take parliamentary grants to tar roads in their community. We say, no, he's doing a great job. Tarring road in your community is a basic right for every citizen. It's a duty for a parliamentarian. Yeah. It is Can not... Can you empty the road? No. 
They do minor projects. Yeah, they do covers. I'm talking about yeah, covers like more holes, okay. giving benches to schools. Mm. When they do it, they put it on social media. He has done so much with parliamentary. It is state budget. It's our taxes that are used to pay this for and they carry out. Mm. We are singing Hosanna for people giving whom we give our budget for them to spend for us. <laughs> that I give my wife budget. My wife goes to the market and cooks the good food. They celebrate my wife more than me who give the, the food. <laughs> That's how we are celebrating the individual and the state that gives the money. So we should thank Cameroonians for building coverage, thank Cameroonians for giving boreholes in communities and benches, not thanking parliamentarians. Okay. Uh, some, some will eat here, eh? others would even, uh, will even care to come and uh, provide a police. Because you? there is no law in place to discipline these this individuals who mismanage and misappropriate government funds. They have uh, <laughs> immunity. Okay, please kindly ensure. Please kindly ensure that uh, today's edition of Prime. Our, our program is uploaded on either your WhatsApp page or your Facebook page. It's live on our Facebook page. Uh, my Media Prime Facebook page is there. And uh, BT Media uh, YouTube page it is also there. Thanks, uh, Samuel Tita, writing from Tico. This one says, when the President of the Republic will start watching real news, all those ministers will give account of every word they mention. Uh, the Head of State, uh, Cyrus, is writing from uh, Bafusam. <clears throat> this one says the agenda of speeds and uh, the agenda of speeds stop the course please the agenda of speeds and misino are different from what is uh, being sent from Yaoundé all in the name of president for this reason they collect what has been offered work on instructions every day billions are announced okay uh, brother uh, Leo, may God bless you and your highly enlightening and lively debates. Can you kindly ask Senior Barrister Ashu to send me his contact number? He was my lawyer when I was publishing Cameroon Post newspaper in 1995. Since I left New Bell Prison in 1996 and went out, I lost touch with him. Okay, um, yes, I will send you Barrister Ashu's number. Barrister Ashu. God has remembered you. <laughs> good, <laughs> good evening, Mr. Liu and crew. Today's topic is good, but it will be better to talk about roads generally, not just the two mentioned. Do you know the Kumbatombe Loom Road? We should not even ask who is blocking. Rather, we should propose what to be done to ministers and contractors. Secondly, I heard someone saying we should empower institutions that have lost credibility. How do you respect a fund or chief? who has been absent from his palace for more than four years. As for ministers working on high instruction, that's just praise singing. Um, Tibok, writing from Guzan. Good evening to you, Tibok. Um, Aku Success says that Mr. Liu and Panis, greetings to tell Mr. Kedia Paul Bia was not elected. Um, okay. Uh, good evening uh, to you. Uh, 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 no, it is. Silano, you want to talk? Yeah. Was he your uh, No, it's Hilaris, please. Hilaris, uh, um, are ministers also using the name of uh, the President of the Republic to do most of the things he never said and uh, are caught up by what they previously announced? Yes, uh, I think so. Uh, at the funeral of uh, late uh, Right Honorable Lifaka Emilia uh, Monjola, uh, the Archbishop of the Bamenda Archdiocese. Uh, Archbishop in Kea, uh, Andrew, said uh, some of these ministers and politicians are scammers, that they are not different from uh, internet scammers. Uh, in the same light, I think that uh, given that a moral authority like the Archbishop uh, sees some of these people as uh, internet scammers, as acting like, like scammers, uh, I think in the same vein they may be uh, scamming using the name of the head of state, uh, that the head of state has said this, the head of state has said that, as though they even have the head of state's phone number. Uh, so I, I think that some of these ministers who have never uh, had the one-on-one -on -one with the head of state, even in the corridors, uh, who may f even pee in their pants when they meet with the head of state, uh, they should not stop deceiving Cameroonians. I think we should know the picture as it is, because we may be asking for too much from, from some of these ministers. Maybe they don't even know what uh, they have been appointed to do where they are, they are. And they may just be some remote control that is managing them. And like I said, I fear that there may be some occult network or some spiritual force that is actually managing affairs and not actually the people we see. Because nothing uh, explains why uh, a minister of public works uh, will not deliver on a, on, on a road project. Nothing explains why uh, the state promises to do things, appoints ministers and, ensures and, and, and instructs them 
that they should do something and it is not done. And the next day, these people go to the field to campaign and they say the head of state has said they will provide water, they will provide roads. And these people who are supposed to be providing these things are saying that the head of state. We don't, like somebody said, we don't expect the head of state to be everywhere in the country to ensure that things are being done. And it would have been a very good thing if he, he paid impromptu visits to some of these construction sites. Uh, I'm sure if somebody who is constructing uh, maybe the stadiums, for example, is aware that the head of state can at any moment just find himself there to inspect the works. Uh, the, 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 the laxity in the execution will not be what we are seeing today. And so, like Leo, I, I believe that uh, some of these ministers, uh, like Marafa said in one of his open letters, that Mr. Bia asked him uh, that how many of you are even ministers, that just about 10 or about 15, that the rest are, are civil servants to whom I've given titles and, 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 and portfolios. So it, it means that we don't have as many as 62 ministers like uh, the, the, gov the size of the government indicates that we may have just about 10, 15 ministers and the rest are civil servants who are just co as confused uh, even how to manage budgets because from the audit report you see that some of the things that they are accused of doing are managerial errors, they are blunders that they don't, people don't master the procedure and they find themselves in, pro in problems, they don't master the law they find themse mm -hmm. themselves in problems mm -hmm. and the issue of high instruction from the head of state is for me because the head of state has placed himself above the social contract he, he no longer thinks that his contract was signed with the people and that these people deserve an account of how the state is managed. Can we have a balance sheet that President Bia has been in power for this long? Can he go to parliament and address the Kamarian people in parliament and say, I took power this day, we had 2,000 roads, I've given 3,000, we had this, I've done this. Because all the problems we have today are problems of development. Of course. Can we have development in Cameroon? Okay, can we have a development? But uh, this issue, there was uh, some nuance about uh, national symbol, the president of the republic. Yes, uh, the 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 country decides how they want to use their national symbols. Okay. Like the emblems of the country, is mostly used by the defense the defense forces. Cameroonians normally don't don't use it. So if the uh, article ten, uh, sorry, article five of the constitution that says that the uh, five sub two that the head of state is the symbol of national unity of the country. There is no other way to depict the fact that he's a symbol of national unity than to put his pictures in state buildings to remind us of the fact that he's a symbol. And just like the national flag, to remind us that we are under the green, red, yellow, with the, uh, the, the golden star, and that we have to pay tribute to the state. These are the ways, various ways. And if somebody thinks that the head of state is not a national symbol, then they should call for a repeal of the constitution. Mm -hmm. Because it's only when the 1972 constitution has amended in 1996 okay. is repealed okay. that we can now deny the head of state uh, role or his yeah, uh, symbol add, of national unity to, to as that, it were. My, question, my question to you is uh, at the beginning of uh, the COVID fight, almost everybody who spoke said uh, we high instructions of the President of the Republic and we are where we are today. Uh, we saying that the President asked them to Yes, <laughs> 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 yes. We are talking about high instructions here. Glaring example is COVID. When this was done at this stage, it was high instructions from the president to this level, high instructions, high instructions. <laughs> How do we explain what's now, happening? Now, there, uh, there are two different okay. things, giving giving instructions and executing instruction. Okay. The, 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 the president has given high instruction, mm -hmm. and those in charge are executing the high instruction. Yeah, it's it's the same. instructions. Yeah, it's it's just no instructions. Okay. How high is the instruction that I don't respect? Mr. Ambe, it's the same as you ask your child to clean your dress and the child will clean it the way that child wants it. But all is that you give an instruction for that child to clean your dress. Okay. Now, we are talking about the importance of the head of state being a, 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 a national symbol, symbol. symbol of national unity. Of national unity. And I'm confused why Senior Barrister Ashu is looking around. He, even in Nigeria and most countries, it is there. In the police station, is there. In minister's office, is there. So it's not only in Cameroon, it should not become a problem. Then to even go further, we are in a democratic country and everybody has his right and freedom to town who he wants to. So if some of us will want to be thanking the head of state in the morning, afternoon, and evening, it is our business to town him. So it should not be a problem. I will keep on thanking him for what he has done. And that is it. It is our democratic right. We should learn to accept it. If you don't want to thank him, fine. You are, it's even good you have your own party. And I also think that 
your party members are also thanking you. We are not complaining when your party members are thanking you. So allow us to thank our head of state, the president or uh, the, the, the chairman of our party. We'll keep on thanking him for the good work he has done. So uh, that's where I would like to end there today. <laughs> we okay. head of state. Very, very little about the question I asked you. Eh? Thank you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> good evening, Mr. Liu. Your program is good. Uh, keep up. I disagree with the speaker who uh, said the picture of the judicial and legislation should be put in public just like that of the president. That is bad faith because in the United Arab Emirates only the president picture is made public everywhere, coming from Prince Nasaku Daniel Mulundu, writing from uh, uh, from Buya, very long time, my friend. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu, great Greek barrister Ashu for me. I lost his contact. I am um, uh, the one Elvis from Douala. Uh, Elvis, I just sent you by Sasha's number. You can, you can get to him. Uh, things cannot work because we take uh, someone that has studied agriculture and put in finance. More for Elvis, writing from Douala. Good evening to you, Elvis. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Is Jacqueline from Kumba? I wanted to ask a question to that man who says Amber are the people hindering the roots construction. How is if he is looking for a position in government? He should come out plain and stop giving blames to uh, other people. Can he show where the boys are? He should ask a government to send military to guide them to work if they can guide and bring brasseries to come down. Why can they not do the same? Okay. Um, yeah. That's true reason why Anglophones are fighting. Mr. Liu, the sound quality and discrepancies are worse on Facebook. Please focus on speaking directly to the microphones. Let's see. Nembo, um, yes, the sound problem today has been very, very bad. We hope that we work on it uh, against tomorrow. We unfortunately have to end at uh, this juncture. Senior Barista, thank you for coming. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Thank you, fellow panelists. Thank you, televiewers. It was quite a rich, <laughs> rich bit. I hope uh, in the nearest future you have the kind heart to invite me again. Ah, uh, you are going to be there. Panelists <laughs> have, uh, or the audience has been disturbing me until some people thought um, you were bad from coming here. We were nobody from coming. Thank you for coming. Mr. Uh, Leo, let me bail you out. I was, I was very ill. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm barely out of it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming too. Thank you, Mr. Leo. Thank you, companions, <clears throat> for giving us your attention and to listen to us educate you. Kedia said that the president appoints ministers based on moral values. We'll talk about that in the next edition. Thank you. <laughs> thank you to Atia Tilaris for coming. Well, thank you very much, Leo. Uh, I also want to thank the head of state uh, because I took my second dose of AstraZeneca vaccine on Monday. In some countries, uh, people have to pay to collect the vaccines, but the head of state has made it that <laughs> Cameroonians can collect for free. And I encourage everybody who, who is willing uh, to go and take the vaccine uh, against COVID-19. Uh, uh, there's nothing i've taken the vaccine i've taken the second dose uh, nothing has happened to me and i think that it will not happen to anybody and just to say that on the issue of uh, the roads in the north and southwest regions uh, the protest started because uh, the regime at the time suppressed the marketing board the power camp uh, the west cameroon uh, cameroon bank and all of that and we cannot at this point uh, knowing all what happened in 1990 when roads were burnt and how it impacted on us uh, be impeding uh, development be stopping the projects let us allow the state let us allow government through the world bank funding and all of that to construct these roads let the non-state armed groups not interfere so that we can now know if government is showing bad faith or if it's embezzlement or something else because they should not be the reason why this road is not constructed i think that the non-state armed groups should uh, make way for these projects should be, to be realized because all what they are fighting for is that development should come to the northwest and southwest regions and if the money is there and they instead leave it to be embezzled or siphoned or misappropriated there will be a very okay. bad thing thank you for coming uh robert thank you very much and also i uh, would like to choose, take this opportunity to thank the head of the, the chairman <laughs> of my political party it is through his high instruction uh, given to the secretary of communication and through professor boyomo that i'm here today to speak on behalf of uh, the head of state. It's a pleasure to be here. 
Okay, we equally want to thank you all who took time off to watch the program. We are very sorry for the sound issues uh, in the course of the program. I myself, I got so agitated and uh, to try to get the technicians to fix uh, the issues. We want to thank uh, the production team. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.